Hello. The 11th theme of the Environmental and Natural Resource Economics course concerns uh, uh, renewable resources. And we start first by modeling of biological growth. So we discussed already before in the context of uh, non-renewable resources, this distinction between renewable and non-renewable, but let's briefly come back to that before we start. So any resource is considered to be renewable if there exists a mechanism that uh, that can produce more of the resource. And uh, I again emphasize that we, we consider like a, like a time time horizon of uh, of similar to our lifetime. So, for example, any type of biomass production is based on uh, biological growth, as we will discuss shortly. Uh, then, of course, uh, production of oxygen required for clean air then, then is based on the photosynthesis of plants. So, so this is also part of the biological process. Um, uh, then, of course, water resources are not, not based on, on biological growth, but there is the so-called wa water cycle with rainfall and, uh, and uh, evaporation of, uh, of water. And for example, therefore, hydropower uh, can be considered a, a renewable resources. Um, then, then we typically classify also wind and solar energy as, as renewable resources. Although if we think about the physics, then, uh, then uh, of course, the lifespan of, of the sun is, is finite. But uh, here it is this course that we talk about our lifetime, then, uh, then this... Uh, this uh, solar energy uh, is still uh, still uh, considered to be renewable. And of course, also all of this wind energy, biomass, as well as uh, photosynthesis, they are critically de dependent. Ultimately, they are dependent on the solar energy. So in the in this uh, theme, we, we will pay attention to particularly cases in, in um, environmental and resource economics, especially non-renewable resource economics considers uh, forestry and fisheries. And there are certain types of uh, similarities between these, uh, these kind of resources. So both woodlands and fish stocks are, can be thought of as capital assets that are intrinsically productive. Uh, and the productivity relies on the biological growth. And we will we will next look into this kind of uh, uh, logistic growth models that can be used to describe both uh, both forest and uh, and fisheries. So here I have uh, four examples taken from the permanent al textbook. Um, let's start with the panel A, where the horizontal axis is the is the stock, and let's think about stock of uh, uh, stock of timber. In, in the woodland. And then this uh, vertical axis is G of S, so that, that refers to growth rate. So if we start from the origin, and we can think about some, some, uh, some uh, fo forest that has been clear cut, so there's not any tree standing, but, uh, but uh, suppose that we, we plant there some, some, some new trees, so then this kind of panel A could be, could be describing the growth of the of the new new timber in a, in a, in the forest land that was was previously clear cut so initially the the growth rate is uh, is uh, increasing so we have this kind of concave curve so so trees start to grow faster and faster but uh, but the change in the growth rate is is uh, decreasing that produces this kind of concave uh, shape and ultimately, then uh, the stock of timber then reaches this point uh, S subscript uh, MSY, which is indicated with this um, uh, broken line. So there the growth rate is at, at its highest level. So the growth rate reaches its maximum. And after that, the growth rate start to decrease. So um, it doesn't mean that the trees are not growing. So trees are still growing but at the at the slower rate and then eventually when the when the when the stock gets large we talk about some really old forest then the growth rate ends so then the stock of timber 
reaches its maximum level and the growth becomes zero. So this this S max would be then like like largest amount of stock that the, that the forest can can have, uh, whereas then this S M S U has this kind of highest uh, highest growth rate. And we will we will in the next lesson we will talk about this. What is the optimal timing of harvesting? Uh, when uh, when uh, when we want to maximize, for example, the economic returns from the from the forest assets. So the first logistic growth model in panel A could be a good description of uh, of uh, of how the how the um, uh, timber stock is growing in the in the forest. Now, what's the difference if we move to panel B? Oh, that's the top top right panel. So here, this uh, this kind of similar kind of logistic uh, growth curve is presented. Uh, the main difference is that there is some kind of minimum level S min. So initially, at very very low levels of the of the stock, then actually the growth can be negative. So we still have this kind of concave curve describing the growth rate, but there is some kind of minimum threshold under which the growth rate becomes actually negative. And this could be a good description of, for example, a, a stock of fish in uh, in the in the ocean or sea. So the idea is that there's some kind of minimum population required that the, that the fish can uh, can reproduce. So if the if the fish population then uh, a number of fish uh, decreases below this minimum population, then it's no longer available able to reproduce itself, and therefore then this uh, stocks start to decrease and eventually and eventually there is a, a extinction of that population. So the similar kind of concave uh, logistic growth curve can also take into account if we, if it, if we have this kind of minimum threshold uh, included in the in the model. So then if we go to the bottom part there is this uh, panel C and D, both cases, there is this kind of uh, uh, growth rate is is uh, increasing and initially at an increasing rate. So compared to these previous panels A and B, so the growth rate is initially increasing, and and then then it becomes decreasing. So this is so called differentiation in this in these uh, figures, and there can be also critical uh, critical this kind of minimum level in this in this bottom right figure that uh, that if there is um, if if the size of the population decreases below this s min then uh, then the then the growth rate turns actually actually negative so this requires that there is first this kind of uh, uh, convex part and then it turns to to concave a little bit later and uh, again please note that these figures indicate the growth rate not the not the the volume of timber or, or vol vol like uh, volume of the of the fish stock but rather the growth okay so i i talked about the forest assets and then also fisheries so let's also then for the sake of complete this also consider some major differences in these types of uh, uh, renewable assets so firstly if we talk about uh, forestry, some some kind of managed forest land, uh, then then it's intrinsically more controllable than than uh, than fish stock in the sea or ocean. So the fish can uh, the fish can uh, swim away, but but uh, the trees are not mobile, so so it's it's uh, then uh, easier to control uh, how much to harvest, when to harvest, and so on. So there is not the risk that the the, the trees are running away. Similarly, of course, if we would compare instead of fishing, also some kind of hunting game, then then this would be also then less controllable. Then, of course, the the time horizon is very very different. Uh, if we talk about uh, forestry, then typically the 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 length of time between harvesting it it's uh, typically several decades. If we talk about boreal forests, maybe in uh, a tropical or subtropical forest it would be would be a shorter time span but but still uh, typically if we talk about fisheries then it is uh, at least yearly if not uh, if not uh, several times a year and uh, typically 
uh, tree harvesting uh, is, is done using, a, 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 at least traditionally, it's based on clear cutting and not a regular cut of incremental growth. Uh, whereas typically in case of fisheries, then, then uh, the idea is to keep the a fish stock relatively stable and just, uh, just uh, harvest the, the incremental growth. Uh, of course, in the case of forestry, the the forest management uh, practices have become more more involved to this kind of uh, harvesting of incremental growth, but that is not done done annually or or multiple times a year. An important consideration is also in the case of forestry that uh, that the land uh, is also also an important asset which has an opportunity cost. Uh, so, for example, instead of uh, using it for forest active forestry activities, maybe maybe land could be used for for agriculture or even commercial use. But on the other hand, then also also forest performs several other 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 functions and ecosystem services, uh, which which create a large number of important external effects as well. So that's also to be to be considered, and uh, and um, and uh, of course, then instead of using this kind of uh, uh, plantation forestry, of course, of course, that can be also also protected forest where where it's not uh, not mainly for the the commercial uh, timber production, but rather for for. Uh, for example, for this uh, ecosystem services and and biodiversity. So I will focus on this uh, this particular course in the case of uh, forest management, and in the next uh, lesson I will then continue on along that theme. Thanks for your attention. See you next time.